Серёж. Серёжа. Сергей. Майк. Майк. Майк, you've just seen your spacecraft ready to fly. What's your feeling like? Oh, it's fantastic to see it at this point. Uh, it's all packed up, ready to go. It's kind of like a pilot on his last walk around of the airplane before it takes off. This is happening five days before the launch, but it's, uh, it's still pretty neat to see it in its final configuration. Hey, everyone. Okay, so should we sign it here? Yes, pick a spot. Looks like all the spots are taken. So here's the very first signature of one brave individual. So does it differ in any way? Well, yeah, of course it's different because you realize that in five days you're going to be actually calling on the rocket and getting ready to launch into space. So there's certainly a, a bit of a different emotion here, but it's uh, the same tradition in the sense that we got to, after the second pick check, come back, visit the museum here. A lot of history here, a lot of uh, great stories, and so it's just wonderful to be a part of.
Joel Montalbano, Deputy ISS Program Manager here in Baikonur. Joel, Soyuz uh, TMA 10M vehicle now vertical on the launch pad, set to go on uh, Wednesday afternoon U.S. time. Can it get any busier at the International Space Station right now? You know, Rob, it's a great day to be in Baikonur. You know, standing in front of the launch pad that launched the first human in space, there's just a magic here, and you feel that magic. Could it get busier? Yeah, it's going to get a little busier for the rest of the year. we got a real busy schedule going, but this is what we do, and this is what we do best. The three crew members, you have two first-time flyers in Mike Hopkins and Sergei Rozanski, but a wealth of experience in the Soyuz commander, Alec Kotov. How will this crew blend on orbit for what promises to be a very busy five and a half months? Uh, this crew is going to do great. Oleg is an outstanding commander. We have a lot of experience with him on board. The two rookies have trained together. The whole crew has trained together. They've trained across the globe at the different, uh, different partner centers. We're looking forward to them. We expect these guys are just going to do a, a fantastic job on orbit. You mentioned the busy time ahead for the space station. Just six weeks from now, yet another Soyuz will be on the pad. You're going to have nine crew members on the station for about three and a half days, an Olympic torch arriving on board, symbolic for next year's Winter Olympics. <laughs> Talk a little bit about this air traffic control pattern at the station. Well, as you said, Rob, you know, we have the Soyuz in November. We have an orbital mission right now that's in free flight that will be berthing to the space station this week. We have another orbital mission scheduled in December, a SpaceX uh, early next year. But this is what the partnership does. We work together. We have a European vehicle up there right now. We just deorbited the Japanese transfer vehicle. Again, we work together. We get things done. We use Space Station for what it's designed for. And, and as you know, Space Station is the largest project ever taken upon by human, human mankind. And we just do a great job. And the partnership, they pull together when you need them. And in November, 15th anniversary, Joel, of the first element launch of the Zarya module, the FGB. Uh, Talk a little bit about uh, how this complex has grown into this research city in the sky from that single lone module. You know, when we started Space Station, we worked uh, with the partnership. We had the first launch, the FGB launch from Baikonur, and we've built upon it. Now that assembly's complete, we're using the Space Station for utilization. That's what it was designed for. We are doing, uh, we're scheduled to do up to 40 hours of crew utilization, crew time, per week on the average for this expedition. It'll be the largest amount of utilization we've done since we've been flying Space Station. Ellen Ochoa, director of the Johnson Space Center. Ellen, welcome back to Baikonur. Uh, crystal clear day today for the Soyuz TMA-10M spacecraft. Uh, it is a complex time at the International Space Station, a very intricate choreography about to unfold. Talk a little bit about the preparedness of our three crew members about to embark on this journey. Well, the three crew, of course, have been trained uh, all over the world, including at Johnson Space Center. They're well prepared. I have no concerns at all about that. Um, it's a very interesting time at the station. I was lucky enough to be at Wallops on the east coast of the United States last week to see the launch of Antares and Cygnus. And now I get to be here for this launch. And so we're looking forward to two vehicles uh, coming toward the station this week. Air traffic control around the station, a very, very complex choreography about to unfold. Uh, just six weeks from now, yet another Soyuz will be on the pad for the next trio to be launched. Uh, the five and a half months that lie ahead for Mike Hopkins, Oleg Kotov, and Sergey Rozanski uh, will be uh, very challenging. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the, the vehicle traffic is one of the things that they'll be having to deal with. Um, but as well, it's a very busy time in terms of science on board the station. Uh, so we do fundamental science up there. We do research and development that's more associated with direct benefits on Earth, including in human health, as well as uh, Earth observing, uh, many other types of things. And then, of course, we're using it as, it as a test bed for exploration. Uh, we've got an experiment on board, or a mean swing bed, a, a test bed that's looking at a new way of scrubbing uh, CO2 out of the atmosphere that we hope to use for the Orion spacecraft, uh, which will take crew beyond low Earth orbit. So lots of exciting things on board ISS.